All right, let's look at 10.8 and complex numbers. In order to start complex numbers, we have to first define and be able to simplify i to exponents. Now, what is i? i is going to be our imaginary number. We are not allowed to take the square root of negative numbers. So the definition of a negative number is negative 1 times a positive value. So if I want to make a negative 6, it's negative 1 times 6. So taking the square root of negative 1, we're going to declare it to become an i. And if I square i, then the square root disappears and I'm left with negative 1. So this is going to start off as our given. So here's what I like to call our i chart. Now, you can never have i raised to a power. As you can see, i squared simplifies to negative 1. If I had i cubed by your rules of exponents, i squared times i to the first, multiply like bases, add the powers, that's 3. Well, i squared is negative 1 times an i, it's now negative i. i to the fourth would be i squared times i squared. 2 plus 2 is 4. But then that simplifies to negative 1 times negative 1, that's a 1. And I can keep going. I can go i to the fifth is i to the fourth times i. That's going to be 1 times i is i. i to the sixth will be i to the fourth times i squared. 1 times negative 1, negative 1. i to the seventh, i to the fourth times i to the third. 4 plus 3 is the 7. 1 times negative 1, negative i. i to the eighth is i to the fourth, i to the fourth. Being multiplied together, 1 times 1 is 1. There is a distinct pattern here. If you look at all the odd powers, you'll notice that your answer ends up as an i, whether it's positive or negative. And if you look at all the even powers on i, you are going to end up with a negative one or a positive one. So, in order to simplify i to a power, if i is raised to an odd power, you know that it's a positive or negative i. And if i is raised to an even power, you know it's a positive or negative 1. We just have to figure out what the sign is. All right, so to determine the sign, it's basically going to be, well, how many negative 1s am I multiplying by? Well, if I need to know how many negative 1s I'm multiplying by, i got to take 2 and divide it into the power to see how many negative 1s I've technically factored out. So we're going to take whatever you're i to the power is and divide it by 2 and that will give you the sign on these two answers up here. So n divided by 2. If you get an even whole number your answer is positive. If you take the n and divide it by 2 and you get an odd whole number you get a negative. Now I said whole number. I don't care about any decimal part. I just want the whole number. So here's some examples. i to the 75th power. All right, here's what I don't want. You. I've seen people do this. Please don't do this and say, oh, it repeats after every four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and count all the way up to 75. If that's the case, I'm going to make this 575, and you can count all day long. All right, first things first. 75 is odd. It's an I. Now we've got to figure out the sign, and you either put a positive or negative here. So you go to your calculator, you do 75 divided by 2 is 37.5. The whole number is 37. It's odd. My answer is negative. You're done. I to the 89th power. Okay, it's odd. It's an I. 89 divided by 2 is 44.5. 44 is even. Your answer is positive. Put the plus sign in. I to 102 power. 102 is even. Put in a 1. 102 divided by 2 is 51. That's odd. Put in a negative. I to the 124th power. That's even. It's a 1. 124 divided by 2 is 62. That's even. Put in a plus. You're done. Sound good? There's your eyes. Now, when you start working with the square root of other negative numbers, we have to follow our definition. The square root of negative 3 is technically negative 1 times 3. So the square root of negative 1 becomes the i, and the square root of 3 is just the square root of 3. There it is, simplified. You should never, ever, ever have a negative inside of a radical. Here, the negative, just like we saw here, automatically becomes i. So for now on, we're just going to circle it, 
draw an arrow out and call it i. Then take the square root of 4, which is 2, and the answer is 2i. Don't make this mistake. Oh, negative times a negative is a positive. No, it's not. That negative on the inside comes out as i. That's negative i times the square root of 11. And then sometimes, once you take out the i, you have to simplify the 50, 25 and 2. Square root of 25 is 5. Don't put it in front of the minus sign. It's not 5 minus i. It's negative 5i square root of 2. Do not multiply these two together. That's the rule if they're real numbers. These are imaginary numbers. Take out the negative i. Take out the negative i. You now have i times i on the outside. Now the 5 and the 20 are positive. We can multiply them together. So now you have i squared times the square root of 100. i squared is a negative 1. Square root of 100 is 10. The answer is negative 10. The square root of negative 16 plus the square root of negative 49. The negatives, take them out as i's. Square root of 16 is 4. 4i. Four square root of 49 is 7. 7i. Seven These are like terms. Add them together. 4i plus 7i is 11i. Alright. Okay. Definition of your complex numbers. A plus BI. A is a real number. BI is the imaginary. So when you think about your number systems, here is your real numbers. That used to be the highest we went to. Okay, well now there's one number higher called complex numbers, and it's made up of real numbers and imaginary numbers. And as you saw, I squared can equal negative 1. So sometimes imaginary numbers become real numbers and they fit back over here. But you'll never see real numbers sneak over here. Now, I have to apologize for this because most authors are very anal. When the directions read, leave the answer in A plus or minus BI form, the answer will have to include a zero if there is no real number or an imaginary number. This is annoying. So for example, if the answer is two, and you put in two, they'll mark it wrong. You have to put in two plus zero I. And if the answer is negative five I, then you have to put in 0 minus 5i. I apologize for this. I don't make up the rules. On the test, I don't care if you put 2 plus 0i or not. I prefer that you don't. All right, add and subtract complex numbers. It's just like combined like terms. Treat the i like a variable. 12 minus 3i is one complex number, plus 2 plus 7i. 12 plus 2 is 14. Negative 3i plus 7i is 4i. You're done. Just remember that when you subtract complex numbers that you have to distri distribute the minus sign and change the signs. Then combine it. So 6 plus 9 will be 15 minus 5i minus 8i minus 13i. Multiplying, just do the distributive property. 2i times 5, that will be 10i. 2i times 3i is 6. Don't forget i squared which now makes that a negative 1, and now it's 10i minus 6. No, it's the minus 6 first, or negative 6 plus 10i. If you type in 10i minus 6, they'll count it wrong. It's not in standard form. Go ahead and FOIL it, just like we always do. 4 times 3, that'll be 12. 4 times 2i is 8i minus 15i minus 10i squared. Simplify the i squared to a negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 10 makes it a positive 10. Add that to the 12 to get 22. Your 8i minus 15i became the minus 7i. There's your complex number. Remember, you can never have an i squared. It has to always simplify. So we go back to complex numbers. 3 minus 2i times 3 plus 2i. Oh, look, a conjugate pair. Guess what's going to happen when you FOIL this out? The middle terms are going to cancel. 9 and then minus 4i squared. i squared is just going to change the minus 4 to a plus 4, which is 13. Asterisk that problem. That's super important because that is going to help us remove i's to go back to real numbers. So the complex conjugate rule says the following a plus bi times a minus bi 
is a squared plus b squared. It's not the difference of perfect squares because you have that i squared which changes to a negative one and changes the minus to a plus. So five plus three i times five minus three i, you should write down five squared plus three squared, 25 plus nine, 34 done. Now, dividing complex numbers means rationalize the denominator rule. Remember, i is the square root of negative one. You cannot have a square root in the denominator, therefore you cannot have i in the denominator. So here we have to use our complex conjugate concept. The conjugate of 5 plus 2i is 5 minus 2i, and you multiply that both top and bottom. The nice part is, is the bottom is easy to do. 5 squared 25 times 2 squared 4, that'll be 29. Denominator's done. But you have to foil out the top. 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times negative 2i is minus 4i. We'll get a fifth plus 15i minus 6i squared. This becomes plus 6, 16 plus 11i. Now, I'm okay if you write it as one fraction. Again, though, if it says write your answer in standard form, a plus bi, you have to separate this as two fractions. And I would recommend leaving the i up in the numerator because some people accidentally put the i in the denominator and that's not where we want our i. This next problem, 7 minus 4i all over 5i, if it's just one term, one imaginary term down here, don't make this 0 plus 5i and multiply 0 minus 5i top and bottom. No, all you need to do is make that i squared. Just multiply the top and bottom by i. So you have 5i squared, which becomes negative 5, Minus 4i squared will become plus 4. Then switch them around because you want the real number first. 4 plus 7i over negative 5. Then separate it into two fractions. And we're done. Notice I left the i in the numerator. That's the safest place to put it. Okay. All right. In your calculator, and of course my calculator froze up again. So let me reload it. You can do complex numbers in your calculator. All right. Now, if you're going to do complex numbers in your calculator, under your mode, I'm back at the home screen, in your mode, you have to change. You will probably have the real highlighted. It's got the box around it. Put your cursor on A plus BI and hit enter. <clears throat> that will show up at the top if you got the 84. Back in the home screen, your I is above the decimal point. So now I can go ahead, for example, I can go up here, left parentheses, 5 plus 3 second I. And let's say let's multiply it by 6 plus 2i. It will foil it and simplify it for you to get to 24 plus 28i. If I want to do a fraction, some of these calculators are a little bit different. Alpha y equals, you go to the fraction mode and you type in the 2 plus 3i. And then we go to the bottom and we put in 5 plus 2i, it gives you this long, ugly decimal. All right. When you type that in, math, return my answer as a fraction, is what you have to attach to it so you don't get the ugly decimal. And there they separate everything out. And there you can see the i off to the side. It's better to put it on the top. All right, you can type this in with parentheses around the top, divided by parentheses around the bottom, but still attach math frac, return my answer as a fraction to get to this. 